Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to look at an important concept in SSIS called SCD. Now let us understand what is SCD. The full form of SCD is slowly changing dimensions. So, basically, the fact tables contain our transactional data, that is day to day transactions. So obviously there is going to change a lot, but on the other hand, the dimension tables are actually providing a prospective to your data, which means in OLTP terms, the dimension tables are like your master tables, which generally don't change, but occasionally you may require a change even in this dimension data. So what to do? when we really require a change in the dimension in the dimension data and we want that data to get reflected on our data warehouse so let us start with our example in this example i have got two instances of sql server with me instance 1 and instance 2 server 1 server 2 the first instance is the oltp instance for me I'm calling it the source instance. In this instance, I have got a table person details. So let us see what is there in the person details table. As we can see, I have got two records, one for Ramesh and another for Shyam. Now, let us go to our second instance. So this instance I am calling as destination instance, and this instance has got a similar table called team persons which represents dimension for persons so let us see what columns are there so it has got the same set of columns with one additional column called etl loaded that is all these six columns which are there in our OLTP table the same six columns are present over here but one extra column is present called EL, etl loaded which shows us the date and time on which this record got inserted in our data warehouse. Okay. So, let us start with our example. Let us go to our, our package, SSIS package. We have named this package as scd underscore type underscore one. Now, if suppose the dimensions are changing, then there are two ways to handle this situation. The first situation is when we get the data from the OLTP and directly update the same data on the data warehouse. So in that is called type 1 change where we do not maintain a history about the old data that was there on the data warehouse. And the second case is called type 2 which we will see in, in any future videos. In the type 2, we do care about what was the old data and hence we do maintain a history about the old data. We will see how it is done in future videos. Now in this video, let us focus, let us concentrate on the SCD type 1 that is slowly changing dimension type 1. So for this, let me drag a OLT, OLEDB source object to our package now let me drag the as as you can see i will first of all add a data flow task let us right click and let us edit the data flow task now let us drag and drop one OLE db source object so here are our sources and here is the OLE db source object so let us drag and drop it. With, this, with the help of this source object, we are going to read the data from our OLTP table. So let us right click it. Let us make this particular control point to our database. So let me go over here. Let me delete everything. Now let us select the first server instance. So here it is, server 1, 
Now in this, the database where our table is lying is actually this one OLE TP DB persons. So let us select this. Let us test the connection. So it's working. So let us click OK. OK. And the table, as we can see, the table name is person details. So let us select the person details table over here. Okay. Now the columns, all columns are there. Okay. Now click OK. So hence our OLEDB source is configured. Now this source will read that all the data that is there in our source table that is OLEDB table every time we run this SSIS package. So now let us provide this data to our SCD component. So the, here it is slowly changing dimension. So let us drag and drop it in our package. Let us connect it. So the data will now come to the SCD component. Now in the SCD component, let us start configuring this component. So I will edit it. So it will start a bizarre. Let us go to the next screen. Now over here we will have to provide the destination table and the business key based on which data will be compared with the OLTP source. So let us click new. Let us click new over here. Let us go to our second instance which is the data warehouse instance. So let us select the second instance. This is our data warehouse instance. And let us select over here our data warehouse persons database. This is the database which contains our destination table. Test connection. Succeed. Okay. This is the DIMS persons table in which our destination data is going to lie. So let us go and select this table. So it is DIM persons table. Now this wizard has automatically detected that all columns are matching between the source and the destination tables but the destination table has got an extra column. This column is ETL load date. So how will data come into this particular column? So let us go back to our destination table. As you can see, this is the DIM persons table. Now over here is the ETL load date. Let us right click it and see. So over here for this ETL load date, I have defined the default value. Now we need to tell the SSIS SCD component that on basis of which columns will you compare the data between the two tables and that column is called business key. So let us specify customer key as our business key. Now over here we will have to provide the list of columns for which data may change. We can also specify over here the columns or the list of columns for which data will never change. Okay. So let us see first the email at address so it can change definitely so let us mark it as changing attribute now second is first name okay, let us assume that the first name may also change if there is a let's say a mistake in the typing now gender generally uh, this attribute will mark as fixed attribute right and for marital status yes it may change so let us mark it as changing attribute and yearly income this may also change so let us mark this also as changing attribute. Now let us click the next button. Fix and changing attribute options. Okay, this we will see in detail in, in some future videos. So let us right now click on the next button. Over here in for dimension members. This functionality also we will see in some future videos. For now disable it. Okay, so don't enable the infer member support click next button so this is the summary and now click on the finish so as you can see 
SSIS has created two more controls. Okay, so whatever data rows slowly changing dimension component will get, it will split into two parts. First, it will compare the data of the source and destination and whichever rows are new rows, it will insert using insert destination. And if there is a change in the changing attributes, then those rows will be updated in the destination table using OLEDB command object. So if you want to verify whether these functionalities are really happening in these controls or not, let us verify it. Let us right click it. Let us go to edit. So as you can see, the OLEDB destination editor is pointing to beam persons table. So whatever new rows are coming, it will go into beam persons table with the correct column mapping. And this ETL load date will have the default value at the database level itself. Now, let us verify OLEDB command object. So, let us edit it. So, we can see that there is an update statement over here. Let us click it. So, which means using this OLEDB command object, the values are going to be updated. For the records, which has were some change in the changing attribute columns, for those records, the values will be updated in the data warehouse. So let us see what are these question marks. So it is these are called parameters. So this is parameter zero, this is parameter one, this is parameter two, this is parameter three, and this is parameter four. Okay, now where are the values coming for these parameters for this update statement? So if we go to the column mapping, we can see easily that parameter four, that is the last part of the update statement after the where clause, that is where customer key equal to question mark right so customer key value is coming from parameter 4 customer key value of the new rec of the updated record is going to be passed to parameter 4 and all other columns are mapped properly to the parameters respective parameters now let us click on ok button so everything is configured now let us save and let us execute our package so as you can see, the two rows that were there in the source table have now moved to the destination table. And we can see new input output rows as two. Okay. So uh, let us go and verify this. So this is our destination. Let us go and verify. Okay. So now these two records for Ramesh and Syam have come with the ETL load date. Now let us stop this package and now let us do some more inserts and updates on the source so let us go to our source okay okay so let me perform four new inserts and three new updates on the source table okay. so everything is done now let us see what we have changed so as you can see this email IDs which were previously null have been changed as well as this income has been changed okay for the first record and this record number three to six these are four records which have been inserted now over here, the data is still the same. Now let us see whether our SSI package is able to reflect all those changes from the source into our destination table. So let us go over here. Let us run our SSI package again. That is SCD type 1 package again. Let us click start. So as we can see, now total 6 rows are read by a OLEDB source, out of which 4 are new rows, so which go into the destination and two rows are updated rows okay so those two rows are going into the OLEDB command object and with the help of the update statement that we have seen these two rows are updated in the destination table as well so let us go and verify let us go to our destination instance and let us select the data so as you can see now 
these four rows have been inserted and these changes that we done on the source table all these changes are also reflecting in our destination table